get back together after a while, everything is going to work out. Every church, I want this to be your song when you get back to church. Y'all ready? Huh. How good it is to gather in God's house. Let me sing it again, yeah. How good it is to gather in God's house. Oh, da, 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 oh, 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 oh. How good it is to gather in God's house. This is what we come to do. To worship and pray to bless His holy name. I really didn't have to be here. 
I really didn't have to be here. I really didn't have to be here. You laid your hands on me. And I'm glad about it. Laid your hands on me. And I'm glad about it. 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 Because I really didn't have to be here. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday night Bible class for Hope Missionary Baptist Church. And on tonight, we will be discussing the believer's source of power. And this teaching is basically an extension of our formation for Christian ministry series. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the believer's source of power? If we ask a variety of different people this question, we may get a variety of different answers. However, just to get right to it, God is our source of power. And I think that we know that on today. But many times do we walk in the understanding that God is our power source or are we trying to be the power source or are we looking for the church to be our power source? But we must understand that the believer's source of power is God. Understand that naturally, a power failure can be a disaster. Hospitals and other vital facilities have backup systems of generators in case power ever fails. This equipment must keep functioning because lives depend on it. Power and the means to use it are critical to an industrialized society. See, and believers in Jesus Christ must be aware that God is the true power source. We all must realize that individually and collectively, we need to be plugged in to the power source. Like we stated, God is our power source, but it is our fellowship with God that ignites the power within us. When we talk about fellowship with God, let me say what we're not talking about. We're not talking about chicken downstairs in the fellowship hall. We're not talking about cake. We're not talking about anniversaries. We're not talking about other churches coming to visit. But what we're talking about is our intimate time with God. Paul states, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is in Philippians chapter four, verse 13. And centuries earlier, David stated, God is my strong fortress and he makes my way perfect. We know, we stated this before, that God is the source of our power. But fellowship with God is what throws the switch and makes that power operative and effective in our lives. Fellowship. It comes 
from the Greek word koinonia. It is a unique word in the Greek. It means having in common or sharing with. Christian fellowship means sharing the things of Christ and sharing in the things of Christ. To do this, we must simply know who Jesus is. It's not merely enough to know about Jesus, but we need to know Jesus for ourselves. So that must, that has to be the initial step that we must take in cutting and activating the power within. We must know Jesus for ourselves in the pardon of our sins. But see, when we look at David, David's preparation for serving God as king was strengthened during his time with God alone in the Judean hills as a boy. So what we're trying to say is that as we fellowship with God, we need to make it a habit of spending time with the master. Years alone with God prepared David for his service under God. And it is our alone time with God that prepares us for the service we do for God. David saw leadership and servanthood from a close perspective, but his time with God prepared him to serve more than his time with people. See, many times we think that in the time that we spend in church that prepares us to do church work, but it is our time alone with God that prepares us to serve God in the church. See, when we get serious about knowing God through fellowship with him, the enemy will try to come and mess things up. We will find ourselves distracted. We will find ourselves self-discouraged. We will find a lack of support. We will find that our schedule is full of nonsense. The enemy will try to keep us busy, to keep us from fellowshipping with God. Have you ever been there? But you have to ask yourself, why does the enemy fight time with God so furiously? See, because time with God is so important to our growth and so beneficial to our success in kingdom building. And the enemy does not want the kingdom of God to be built up. Have you asked yourself, what are the spiritual rewards that come our way if we are faithful to our fellowship with God? To truly answer this, we must ask another question. What is mankind's ultimate purpose on this earth? Isaiah 43, verse 7 reads, Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. This it was who I created. It is what I created them. He created us to bring glory to his name. How do we accomplish this task of living a life that glorifies our God? 
we must understand initially that we were created for his glory. He created us in his own image to have fellowship with him. See, God had a close relationship with Adam and Eve before the fall. But the disobedience that occurred brought dishonor to his name. Man's image was marred and fellowship was broken in the fall of the garden. But at the right time, God took the ultimate step to recreate people's potential to bring glory to his name. We must be transformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Ask yourself, was there ever a person whose every thought Word and deed brought glory to God every hour of the day, every year of his life. Yes, it is Jesus Christ. Jesus declared in John chapter 17, verse 4, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Therefore, As a believer, trying to accomplish the ultimate goal, I must realize that I must give God glory in everything that I do. In each day, I need to be looking more and more and more like Christ. I need to be conforming myself to the image of Jesus. How do I become more like Christ? We have to make an effort to be around Christ. We have to make an effort to spend more time with Jesus Christ day in and day out. It's just like becoming like someone else. This is accomplished by being around that person, by talking to that person and doing things with that person. As believers, we have to make a conscious effort to be around Christ, to be in his word, to dialogue with Jesus, and do the things Christ has called us to do. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So let us strive on today as believers in Jesus Christ to give God the glory and strive day in to conform our lives to the image of Jesus Christ. If we are going to have a prosperous relationship with the Lord, we have to seek to become like Christ. We may be going through heartache and pain, but we have to strive to be more like Christ. People may turn out their back on us, but we have to strive to be more like Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So on today, my brothers and my sisters, I want us to strive to be more like Christ. I want us to strive to spend more time with Christ. 
I want us to strive to spend more time praying for one another as we strive to walk in greater fellowship with our Lord, in greater fellowship with our King. And understand on today that the believer's source of power is God. Fellowship with God ignites the power and the components of fellowship that we need to be focusing on on today is that we must be focused on the word of God. We must be committed to praying to our God and we must be walking in obedience. So on today, if we are going to have fellowship with our God and we are seeking to ignite the power that is within us, we must be committed to the word. We must be committed to prayer. And we must walk in obedience. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come now as humbly as we know how. Thanking you for being the power source. And Lord, we ask you to give us a mindset, Lord, to walk in fellowship with you from this day forward. Give us a mindset, Lord, to be students of your word. Give us a mindset, Lord, to be committed to prayer and give us a mindset, Lord, to walk in obedience. Now be with us now, Lord, as we conclude this Bible study. Continue to fellowship with us and we will continue to fellowship with you. Bless us now. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and fall afresh in our hearts. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Yeah, come on, bless the Lord with me. Come on and help me come say. Come on and bless. The Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to him. Hallelujah. 